When I look at my baby with those big brown eyes With those soft lips and that warm smile I wanna jump all along the man that holds him tight Give him sweet kisses all night Cause my baby's got so My baby's got so My baby's got so my baby's got so Oh, when I talk to my baby, he listens good. Tells me everything that a man should. He understands my crazy hand, knows me well, appreciates my love, and that's how I can tell that my baby's got so 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 I love the way he looks I love the way he smells I love his mind is grind He's so fine, I love the way he grooves, I love the way he moves, I love his walk, his talk, his so vibe. Cause my baby's got so, my baby's got so, my baby's got so, my baby's got so, my baby's got so. My baby's got so, ooh. my baby's got so. Ooh. That was Leica. This is Tiny Jam. My name is Chris Denman. We record this at the Grand L in St. Louis, Missouri. Leica, you're from here in St. Louis. I got to know what's the name of that song. Who's it about, too? Drop some names. Who is it about? It's actually about um, a man that I created. I went to this built a man factory Go on. and just created this perfect man for myself. And that's who it's about. So. Speaking of perfect <laughs> men, you have a, a guitarist accompanying you. Can we say hi to your guitarist? Yes, this is Timothy. Who is Timothy McGinsey? He is amazing. We recorded a song together and um, he's awesome. So when you put something like that together, do you kind of mess with people a little bit, maybe make certain people think it's about them, other people give them the, give them the, eh, that's not about you. Oh, it's, it's definitely going to be some people who think this is about them. But let me just set the record straight, it's not about you. <laughs> do you enjoy having that power over people? Uh, no, 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 I do not. Yes. Sounds pretty nice. I don't think I have anything in my life that I can hold over anyone like that, so. All right, Leica, you've been busy. You've been playing some shows outside. Have you had any experiences we need to know about uh, in regards to an outdoor performance or even a socially distanced performance that uh, has piqued your interest that even despite uh, folks not being able to get out just as much, is there something worth sharing that you've done over the last eight months or so? Yeah, absolutely. I've been at Nine Mile Garden and it's an open air venue. If you haven't been, it's awesome. and. Um, yeah, singing in the winter, in the cold, but uh, it's, it's been fun, it's been fun. We have heaters and fire pits and stuff like that, so it works. Very nice. Uh, welcome to Tiny Jam. We do appreciate you being on here. We're excited. What we do on the show is you hear some music, you learn a little bit about the artist, and then we have cocktails as well. Today we have Jeremy making a classic cocktail with Gentleman Jack. We've paired Gentleman Jack with Leica today for you to enjoy anytime at home, wherever you're at. Jeremy, how are you? I'm doing well. Thanks very much. Yeah, I'm thinking the Gentleman Jack is a nice touch. It's got a, a classy feel. You want to sit back, relax, listen to some good tunes that uh, somebody like Leica is building out. Uh, I think we picked right. You? I absolutely agree. It's a nice, uh, you know, mellow but bold. Uh, whiskey and that reminds me of Lake so. Right, I'm thinking I'm not important enough to say mellow or bold, but it fits so well with this pairing that we have today. Um, what are you going to make for us today? I like, first of all, I just like Gentleman Jack in general, but then you've got some, looks like some Jack Daniels 
uh, specific bitters and sour and all that good stuff. Yeah, we've got a lot of really delicious stuff, but what I'm gonna be making is the classic whiskey sour. Um, we're gonna be using the super awesome, delicious uh, Gentleman Jack. We're gonna also be using the Gentleman Jack Sweet and Sour, uh, which you can get at your local store. And then I've brought the secret ingredient, one delicious egg that we we're gonna be using the egg whites of. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. <laughs> What's going on here? Why is there an egg at a cocktail demo? So this is actually the way that they classically made a whiskey sour. Uh, what they would do because, you know, 100, you know, 120, 130 years ago when they were creating this cocktail, they didn't have a lot of different, you know, exotic ingredients. They had to kind of work with what was readily available here in America. So they had whiskey, luckily. Uh, they did have Jack Daniels back then. Hopefully they were using it. Uh, and then we also have uh, this wonderful stuff, which, you know, if you don't have access to it in your house, you could also make it with just a little bit of lime juice, lemon juice, and a simple syrup made with sugar. Got to be resourceful in these times. Absolutely. Certainly. No, it, it's, it's nice that we can actually have a good cocktail, and then you can go with the classic route. And then you can kind of, not by flavor-wise, but you can spice up the look of it, the taste, the viscosity, if I may. Yeah, absolutely. The egg will make it really uh, kind of foamy and almost a little bit creamy to the texture, which is kind of really nice for this time of year. You know, you have your, you know, eggnog type drinks and things like that. This won't be quite as heavy as an eggnog, but it will give you kind of that silky texture that you're looking for, as well as having a really nice, you know, delicious, flavorful drink. Is there a type of drink where we should always avoid putting egg whites into it? Uh, the only one that I would say is uh, probably, I don't think tequila drinks necessarily go the best That's fair. with, That's with fair. eggs. Uh, mixing tequila and eggs, you could probably do it, but maybe you shouldn't. I don't know. All right, let's see it. I'm excited to uh, check out this drink. And then, uh, I don't know, maybe Laika wants one. We'll uh, enjoy another song. So walk us through it. Absolutely. So what we'll be doing is we'll start off with two ounces of the delicious Gentleman Jack. Good for gentlemen, gentle ladies, everybody. Thank you. I was about to ask, like, how does this work? Like, getting Absolutely. divided amongst folks. And then also, as we want to remind people, thanks for being responsible, but uh, feel free to uh, get a little wild with the ingredients based off of what Jeremy throws out there. Sure, sure. So we've got our two ounces in our shaker tin of the Gentleman Jack. Then next, we're going with the Gentleman Jack uh, sour, sweet and sour cocktail mixer. And we're going to do about two ounces of that. Now, I'm Here trying to go. think, is there is there a way you put too much egg white into one of these? Uh, to be perfectly frank, no. Uh, the only way is if you overfill your glass, and that's the only <laughs> way it, would, it wouldn't go well for you. Um, but here we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and crack, and I'm going to separate the egg whites as, you know, only an expert bartender can toss egg white back and forth, of course. I'm glad that you have that skill. I, yes. would, I didn't want to have to step in and right. Oh, I, with you the know. Mix. Yeah. So then what we do is we don't add the ice yet. What we want is a really nice, delicious, foamy, creamy sour. So we seal it off and then we shake it really hard for about 10 seconds. See, and this is the part where we require a professional bartender. Absolutely. Like, like Jeremy so, from Barkeep. <laughs> sorry. Didn't mean to interrupt. So you shake it up, make it nice and foamy, and then you set it, take the lid off again and then you're going to add your ice and that will chill it and also prevent it from getting overly foamy and overflowing your glass see and i feel like this is a drink you can share with friends too because while it is classy and it does uh, serve a purpose it's definitely uh, inviting as well right absolutely perfect for a holiday season it really works with all seasons if it's hot if it's cool outside Add a little bit of nutmeg or cinnamon on top. You've got a perfect holiday drink, too. And then you shake it back up. Now, Leica, could you use this in your show to accompany uh, a song? The shaking part. Oh, yeah. You'd be game for that? Jeremy, let's Absolutely. do that. Let's set, let's yeah. set up next live I mean, show. if Leica wants to take me on tour and be your personal bartender, that would be perfectly fine by me. It's done. Done deal. Okay, glad we've got that settled. There we are. So we have this beautiful foamy, almost like, it almost has a vibe of like having 
It's like a cocktail latte almost. See, I think, you, did you write that last night? Like, how, did you prep I did. that? I did. I think that's pretty good. Every and I think now it's and very then, descriptive. Every now and then, the bartender has to come up with something a little clever to say. And then we garnish it with one of these beautiful Luxardo brandied cherries, which are the best cherries in the business. So it makes the perfect dessert to your cocktail, essentially. Very nice. I think you've uh, I think you've built a winner. Cheers to you, and uh, we're gonna go back to Lake if that's all right with you. And you may wanna you may wanna share that with her here in a bit. Absolutely. Uh, we'll make that fun. Nice uh, nice cocktail from Jeremy from Barkeep. Leica, you've got another song, but I figured we would chat a little bit more. Number one, how do you feel about the cocktail that's paired with your music today? Um, it sounds great. A little egg, a little protein. Right? I mean, okay. You can't so go wrong, right? You're not going to have as much sugar in the sour mix, or you're not going to have anything that's uh, as hastily put together. That has to be a plus if you're going to choose to have a cocktail. Absolutely. Now, I say this because, uh, and I don't know how much you want to jump into this, but you're a dietitian as well as a musician. Uh, do those roads ever cross? <laughs> I mean, they I guess, actually do. Okay, yeah, let's let's hear I've about had it. Interviews where people have had me on to talk about, you know, immune um, enhancing things, you know, obviously related to COVID, and then also how I've pivoted in the pandemic with music. So they do cross sometimes, and I have to do everything I can to stay healthy so I can sing as best as I can. So they they do correlate. Very nice. Okay, didn't expect that on Tiny Jam, did you guys? That's, uh, that's right. Lake is bringing it from uh, two different angles. Now, you mentioned earlier that you all wrote and recorded this song together. Um, what are the plans? So as we sit here, you've got some new songs that are, uh, have been written. Are you putting out new music? Uh, what can we expect in the next six months from you? Yeah, so we just did these, the songs that we're doing today. I think we did them like last week. We recorded them. So they are officially out. Um, yeah, so you can check them out on Spotify, iTunes, wherever you get your music from. When you when you have an established career, does heavy touring, growing your music career, does that actually come into play quite a bit? Is that a goal or does music always take a back seat? It, it does have to take a back seat. I, I try to balance both though. Um, but yeah, I'm really just good performing here in St. Louis. I don't really have aspirations to tour and I mean if it happens hey I'll go but um, my goal is just to make great music here I think you're doing a great job so far in the how long have you been playing in st. Louis uh, about three years about three years is there anything that you have noticed with yourself that's changed over the last three years as a performer do you have certain specifications do you feel like you've improved in certain areas not that we have to completely turn the mirror on you, but is there just anything that you've noticed that you're proud of? Yeah, my my voice is just stronger. And I think that's just from singing more. But I'm, a lot of my friends comment who saw me, you know, performing my first shows. And they always say, my gosh, that, your voice is stronger. Like, it's just stronger. And I think you'll see that in this next song. Well, let's get a little preview of the next song. So what's the name of the song? And then is this about another person it, it absolutely is not but it, it's called i want my man um and it's it's for my uh, for my fans because i think my target audience is probably mostly men and uh you know i didn't show i didn't choose that but they they chose me so uh you know most men they want to be wanted they want to be wanted by a woman and so it's about a woman wanting her man all right, it's been awesome talking to you on Tiny Jam Lake. Let's hear your final song. I 
can't breathe without you. I can't sleep without you. I can't hear without you. I want my man, but he don't love me no more. I want my man, but he won't touch me no more. I want my man, but he won't kiss me no more. I want my man, but he won't love me no more. I beg, I beg, baby, I don't believe, please don't leave. I promise you I'll do right. I'll do those things you like. I said, baby, please don't go. You know I love you so. I can't breathe without you. I can't hear without you. I can't sleep without you. But he don't love me no more. I want my man. But he won't touch me no more. I want my man. But he won't kiss me no more. I want my man. But he won't love me no more. I want you to love me. I want you to tease me. I want you to squeeze me. Baby, 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 love me some more. Kiss me some more. Touch me some more, love me. I want my man, but he don't want me no more. All right, Leica, did you? Uh, where did you grow up? Cape Girardeau, Missouri. That's, that's a, a little bit rural area in Missouri. Do you feel like uh, where you grew up, as compared to living in St. Louis now? Uh, do you draw any influence from where you grew up? And I'm going to sip on your uh, the cocktail that was made for your show here. Yeah, I think um, I, I love that I grew up in a small town. I just feel like small town people, I mean, we just don't have as much edge as city people. And no offense, I, I love city people. My friends are, you know, uh, from the city and they watch out for me because I'm that naive person that doesn't know that somebody's about to like steal my purse or something, but um, yeah, no, and I, you can hear some of that like Southern accent come out in my songs, especially when I get tired. Uh, you can hear that Cape Girardeau accent. Who would be your, your dream collaboration? Let's say you make a, uh, a song, you do a duet with somebody, you get to choose tomorrow, any person, who are you doing that with? Nelly. <laughs> You, like, you were I not like, prompted to give a, a perfect St. No, Louis no, answer, no, no, no. I, but I will say that's not, I did not expect that. Yeah, no, I like like some of the stuff that he's written for like Florida Georgia Line, like, you know, some of the country stuff that he's done. So you think you could take over that part? Okay, see, yeah. that would be way cooler than seeing Nelly with some dudes in uh, sparkly jeans and uh, bleach blonde hair calling themselves. So yes, Absolutely. I'm, I'm into that. I think that you're headed down the right path. Okay, so you're doing a duet with Nelly, and where's the dream show in St. Louis? The venue. I mean, I guess it's at the Scott Trade, right? Either that or, or I'm thinking minute, we just put you up. Do I even call it, it that up. anymore? I don't even know the Who name knows? of it. Who knows? I knew what you meant. Why don't we set you up under the arch? Okay, that oh, works. That yes, it's socially distant. We can spread out if we still need to. I think we're into it. Thanks for coming on Tiny Jam, Lego. Like